How are you guys? Uh, are you good? Of course you're good. If you're not good, you will not be here. Because this is going to be a challenging time. Hablar español. ¿Quién hablar español aquí? Ah, qué bueno. 10, 12 personas. Um, necesita practicar más porque en el cielo todos los habitantes hablar español. Sí, gloria a Dios. El viva. Su nombre. Cristo. <laughs> and just breathing with my Spanish. And uh, it, it all ends right there. So, my name is um, Diostein Krogedal. Uh, in Norwegian we say Jostein Krogedal. And uh, Krogedal mean, uh, reminds you about crocodile. Is that right? So, my Twitter name is Krogedal Dundee. So, if you look me up, that's, that's me. And Diostein is a very, very, uh, very, very good name. It means horse and stone. When people brief about the name, it's about king and queens and, and kingdom and also my name means horse and stone. And actually, that's, that's the history of my life as well. Uh, I'm, um, I'm not, uh, I'm not a, a pop star, I'm not an idol, I'm not an athlete, I want to be uh, some years ago, but uh, I quit that dream, so now I'm living another dream. Uh, but the whole thing is about doing something with your life. I have come here today with two messages. The first one is, can I encourage you to create a better story? That's the first one I want to share right now. And the next one is, what is a real man? And no woman allowed on that session. So if there are anyone inside here, you're not allowed to be there in next session. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Errol and, um, and your beautiful wife, Matilda. Uh, that I have known for, I think it's over 15 years, and also see your faithfulness and your, your constantly work for the kingdom, for the next generation, and for the nation. And I uh, am so, I'm so touched by the work that the God is using you and your team here in the whole, have influence in all of Holland. It's amazing. So we have been a part of the journey, actually sitting around the table to Pastor Gary in London, uh, and, and, and had picked up a lot of, a lot of good, uh, good points for Pastor Gary. So all cred for what I am today to Pastor Gary and also to Errold. Amen. Amen. Can we pray? Very short prayer. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will reveal Christ and the purpose of life and help those in this room to go from where they are into the next season and creating a better story in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, in 1996, I gather a group of 30 person and because uh, I used to live on the West Coast, where you, you probably maybe heard about Stavanger, that's the main place for oil production. Uh, but I was in, in a conference in Oslo, and I feel prompted to pray for a nation. So I gather a, a bunch of people, and we have a prayer walk in the very heart of Oslo. And uh, in, the, in the midst of this prayer walk, it was, uh, it was January and there was snow in, in Oslo. I went down on my knees. I remember, remember I get wet on my knees. And so when I was praying there, uh, I was praying for the nation. And so I heard a voice inside me that this town is the most important town for this nation. And that was the kind of seed into my life that I saw something which I didn't know what should come to pass. At that time, I was a businessman. I had two small kids, and I did my, my, my normal life, and I went to church and all that kind of stuff. But a seed was planted into my life. But I didn't know after, after seven, 14 years that I will be pastoring a church and today we have nine locations all over Norway and uh, we have 13 services on a Sunday. And I, I, I will challenge you today, where you are uh, right now, never underestimate the potential you have in your life. 
When you following the path of God, everything can happen and it probably will. Can you say amen to that? So many people are just walking around in circle and they don't break out when God called them out to step in in what he have for us. So Ephesians 2.8 says, for it's by grace you have been saved. Say amen. <laughs> there, is no, there is no easy way here. It's only by grace you have been saved. True faith, and this is not from yourself, it's a gift of God. When you receive the gift from God, which are salvation, grace, forgiveness, you're starting a new story in your life. You cannot go back to where you were. You need to go in the, you need to follow the new master, which his name is Jesus, into the future. And maybe you're sitting here today on, for various reasons that you uh, maybe have come to a, a place in your life that uh, you're not on the best place. This is the time for you to actually jump on the train again, the bus or the bike or whatever. Just jump on again. Because last word is not spoken. Because the, your story should not define the future in your life. This is a time for miracle. It's time for raise up. It's time that God show up and do something in your life. Amen. So, and uh, hey, 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 if you're going to clap, you will clap properly. That was a bad clap. So... So, um, uh, in Hebrew 11, uh, 3, it says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Your story can be another story. You don't have to live like you used to be. And I, 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 I will take you into different seasons then when I, I, I got saved when I was nearby 18 years, I, well, I, I lived a life, it was girl, gold and glory, it was an amazing time. But God called me out after my mom prayed and fasted for me because she didn't like the story I was up to create. She, so so the, she made agreement with God, I will pray and fast until he is saved. Be careful of what we ask for God. You can die for a prayer like that. So, <laughs> but she is still alive, and my mom is 83 years, and we 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 FaceTime every day. I love her from the bottom of my heart. So grateful for my mom because she took me over. She did the hard work, and I come to Christ, and that was a kind of change in time from a unbeliever to a believer. And so the journey started, and two years after that, I got married when I was 20. That's a very Christian age to uh, become married into, and I have no clue whatsoever what it was to be, uh, to be married. Now I know a little bit more, and I've written a book about that, and we'll talk a later about that uh, later on. So that was a big, huge change to get married. And so I started my own business. We get two kids. We went to Mexico for just, uh, not because Mexico was very holy land. I don't think it's more holy than another. Love Mexico. Uh, la, la comida, la cultura, la musica, todos. Uh, man, uh, but, um, but Mexico was a place for us to, to find what is the purpose of life. I had a sense of calling that God had called us into ministry. But I was afraid to be a missionary and, and be sent to Africa, really to, to uh, read Swahili and uh, all that stuff they're doing in Africa. I love Africa, but I'm not love to move to Africa and to be a missionary. So we need to figure out that. And I found that answer in Mexico. But that was a transition of life. And so I came home and after a couple of years, uh, uh, I stopped the business. And so I went into and took my education. And so we started a church in our living room, and actually we broke the 11th command, it was because they usually had not start new churches. Uh, it used to be at the 11th command, but now it's, it's okay to start new churches. But we started a church with 10 person, and those 10 person gave their life to the, to the dream. And that was at that time, I met your pastor Earl, and he asked, how about your life? And I said, it, it is 
living the dream because it was the dream to plant not only one church but church after church see Sunday after Sunday that people coming to Christ and so I quit my business started the church and when I became a very very young 55 of a year of age I sold my house 400 square meter in in the west and I moved to Oslo and uh, now we have restarted our life in Oslo, the capital, because it's the most important place to be for a church builder to change a nation. Not a church, not a town, but to change a nation. It is not by me, I'm not a superstar, but I have been sent out from a superstar and his name is Jesus Christ. So I'm 50 seven years this is off the record I'm 57 years of age on this coming Wednesday and I in the midst of planning my next 15 years it's a written plan because I believe so strongly in written plans as a written plan of what we're going to achieve and uh, have a sense of what God have called us to do the next 10 15 years so it ain't over before it's over Roman 4 verse 20 yet he did Abraham yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises of God but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God being fully convinced that God had power to do what he had promised him this is a pretty awesome statement if you're childless and you're 90 the most people will feel and see that it's over. <laughs> the train left. But there's something about God. It ain't over before it's over. So never think that it's over because you have done that, because this is a situation. Maybe some relational breakdown or, or you, you lost your job or there was some sickness or whatever. But whatever have happened to your life, it ain't over before it's over. And when it's over, it's over. But before it's over, it ain't over before it's over. You, are you with me? Yeah. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promises to God. What the heck has God called you to do? I, in the next session, I, I will go a, a, more deeper on that. Because to be a man... It also to be responsible as a man because you have been given some responsibility and you need to take that responsibility and if you don't take the responsibility it will have some consequences as it will have consequences also to take the responsibility but I'm not your pastor I'm not God I'm just a voice that challenging you today what have God called you to be and do and you have to answer that. And now there is something about, I, I love T.D. Jakes. I love, he is the only man that can have me standing on the church and yelling and screaming like I ha really have forgot that I'm a Nor Nor Norwegian. Norwegian doesn't do that. And I guess that Holland, people from Holland, and especially in the Hague, they don't stand on, the, on, on their chairs and scream and yell like they were Afro-American. But I love this and I love when there is so excitement that I want to give glory to, to God before it happened so often we give glory to God after it have happened but the man of God he give glory to God before it happened and that, that leads me actually to the to the question what have God called you to do what have he called you to live what have he called you to start what have he called you to stop because there is a, uh, there is a time to start and there also a, um, a time to stop have you heard about bumblebee you're familiar with that uh, in this morning at the breakfast there come a bumblebee and just drum, drum <laughs> dropped into my life a huge one I, I love bumblebees you know um, you should never tell the bumblebees that they cannot fly because the scientists they tell us that their wings are too small they are too heavy and they cannot fly they are, they are, the technical are uh, they are unprepared to fly but the bumblebee doesn't know, so she fly. <laughs> there is something about when people telling you you can 
and you cannot, and you believe the wise instead of doing the work that God have called you to do. Are you with me? So many times people telling us, you cannot do that. You're not able to do that. You're not gifted to do that. You're not in the right family. You don't have enough money. So people telling us what we can do and what we cannot do. When I quit my very good paid job, actually my business, I have enough money and I reached all my goals and I was sitting there. And, and when I said that, okay, let's start a church that will change a nation. And it was just a few person in the room. A lot of people leave you when you're telling them, this is what I'm going to do. This is what God have called me to. People getting insecure when you're stepping out of the box and people cursing you. And at that moment that we said that we want to start a church, we want to have Bible school, we want to be in, in, in 10 years, we will be in five towns and this will be an amazing time. No one believed in us. There was no fundraising. There was no, actually fundraising. I sent my wife with your operation room nurse. I sent her to work full time and plus to finance my vision. That's a good one. So get a, get a good paid woman if you don't have one. So, so, so she went out and working and we opened the house to young people with this huge dream. And the whole thing started there. And, but when you're telling people that what you're up to, People will leave you because people don't like people who go out of the system. So the fear for the unknown is holding us back. But if you have confidence in the calling, and you don't have to be a pastor to have a calling. I, I, I lived most of my life uh, uh, not as a, as, a, as a pastor, but as a normal person, <laughs> if you got Thank you for understanding that. Only the pastors understand that. But the fear for the unknown, fear for failure, fear for lack of money, fear to be outside the system. Remember that Jesus, he, went, he was born out of the system. He was, he was teaching out of the system. He was operating out of the system. That's the reason that we also can come out of the system and create a new system that can actually help the nation, help ourselves in Jesus' name. Is this good? I'm preaching myself warm here. And that, actually that's pretty easy because there are 30 degrees outside. And I think it's also inside. Have anyone of you heard about uh, um, Nokia? Yeah, uh, connecting people. Have anyone of you bought their phone recently? Have you heard about Ericsson, the Swedish, uh, Swedish uh, phone? They are all history. Because there was a man called Steve Jobs. He created a new story. And then um, we all have this phone in our hands. So I'm, I'm singing the old song. He's got a whole world in his hand. He's got, you know that song? This is our phone. And Steve Jobs created a new story. So it is for us to actually change the story. It, it doesn't have to be like it used to be. We can do something new in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm, I'm triggered by, um, by statistic. And in Norway, it is nearby 5% that are attending church once a month in the whole Norway. That's include uh, the Catholic, uh, the Lutherans, the Free Independent, the Pentecostal, and, and what's label you, you will put on it. But those percentages uh, are not, people get set aside. Okay, this is what we have to play about. But in the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that the 95% that have not heard, have not received, have not accepted. So I'm I thinking the opposite. I can create a new story. It's just about momentum. Momentum means actually to have 300 men gather around a common goal and go in the right direction like a unity that can be a force that can change a nation. It doesn't take 
10,000 people just take one that, uh, that, that actually decide, I can change the story. I can bring my part into the future. I can be the solution. I don't want to be the problem. I want to be the solution in Jesus' name. By faith, it all can happen in Jesus' name. So I just, um, I, I like plus and minus. I like black, black and white. So what can stop me to take uh, the new steps. And I think the biggest enemy we have is ourselves. <laughs> I don't know about you, but there is something about confidence, there's something about self esteem, there's something about myself, how I look at myself, that will stop me to take a, a step in faith. But also, my experience. And, that's, and I think that's one of the reasons that so few actually fulfilling God's potential because we have a lot of experience. And the longer you live, the more bad experience you need. That means that the, this old book called the Bible, that should be on the table. Not only when you're young and you, you take the, the big decision and the big choices and so on, but when you're becoming 50, and 60, just step in what God have called you to be and do in those times. Because when you are ready, you need to get rid of the story. All the bad stuff and all those who let you down and, and you get fired. You don't have the money. You have sickness and, 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 and people dying around you. That, that is our experience. But just be like Abraham that have a, had a a seed in his life at the I will my my inheritance will have influence on all, all over the globe God have told him and even to the 90s you need to hold on you need to grab on their promises of God but it's also another one it is the environment what kind of environment are you in sometimes you need just to stop to be with friends because they have bad influence on your life. Have you ever had a, don't put your hand up right now, have you ever been to a bad environment that you have to leave? Actually, I, I, this is the hard part of following God because if you say yes to God, you say no to something else. If you say yes to some values, some, some, some belief system, some, some Christian things, you need maybe to say no to some other things. And this includes so many times people, environment, language, attitudes that you need to, for, to protect yourself. You need to go out to be what God has called you to be. But also some, uh, something else that can hinder me to take new steps. It's the lack of faith. It's the lack of perspective. So um, this is coming soon to an end. But 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. In the, in the first, from verse 1 until verse 7 in the uh, second book of Timothy chapter 1. It is amazing to see two person the one is Paul he's writing a letter to Timothy Timothy was probably maybe 25 years of this in this stage and Paul could be around 50 to 55 the Bible uh, teachers tell us so we have a kind of mentor slash coach to next generation and I, I love the spirit of Paul. I'm going to preach about that tomorrow in, in our church, you know, slow, tomorrow. Because the, the attitude to Paul was, it was not the apostle that was coming with a great vision. It was, a, it was a dad. It was a man who loved next generation. And I, I had a book to Errol last night and I gave it to him and, um, uh, and his beautiful wife. Matilda, uh, and I, I, I wrote in, in the foreword that uh, uh, thank you for your, your constantly work for the nation and for the next generation. Well, when you become into my age, my, 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 my kids are growing up, they're 30, in the 30s. Now I have two grandkids and, and it, it's coming to generation. And the attitude 
to us that are in the 50s and 60s should be, how can I help next generation? Instead of the, oh, I don't know how it is here, but we have an uh, attitude in Norway, we'll, we'll, uh, what I call the Spanish sickness. That means that uh, when they're coming to the 50s, they buy uh, some apartments down on the Sun Coast in Spain, and they disappear. They, dis they work as little they can, and so they fly as soon as they can down to cheap red wine and to the sun down there. What the ego they are because we are designed in all different stage and season of life to mean something to other people we are not here to endure and just uh, celebrate we, of course we are like we are today but we are here to fulfill the purpose of god in every season in jesus name so so sick uh, paul is is talking to the young man he said, for the spirit God gave us does, make a, uh, does not make us fearful and discouraged, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline slash wisdom. So the spirit of God does not make us fearful. How can he write that? Who have been in the conversation who told Paul that this young man, only 25 years old, that he have actually uh, become sitting on the front row, on sitting on, the, on, on his toe, and he was ready for everything, to withdraw himself back, doesn't take any, any um, action anymore. He just moving back, feeling sorry, not good enough, losing his confidence. Maybe people have said something to him. Maybe, maybe have been together with wrong people. I don't know, and I don't care. But I know that the father, Paul, have hear, heard something. And his advice is so clear. He addressed the problem, which are discouragement. And I guess we all have been there, or are there right now. God will help you out of the self pity party that you are a part of right now and his medicine is amazing it is power love and wisdom in your life so you can go from this men's event in the hog this beautiful summer uh, summer whatever it is you can go out to, from this venue and go with power love and wisdom in your life God will give you that. You don't have to stay like it is. And I, I want to I wanna quit right now with uh, Tommy Barnett. Tommy, have you heard about Tommy Barnett? He's an amazing pastor, married to a Swedish girl. And, and he know he's in 85, I think. And he started the whole thing with Dream Center that actually uh, taking the marginalized people and help them building house and feed them, give them education and give them room and set up. I've been to, um, to uh, Dream, uh, Dream Center in, in LA and I've been to the streets, been to the hospitals and to the hospitals around and see the work they're doing. And, and this man have done so much for God. And one interview him and he said that, uh, um, what would you have done differently if you could live again? And so he said, I will, point number one, I will dreamt bigger. I will be a dreamer, live in the dream. I will dream bigger. And number two, he said, I will take in greater chances. So here we go. Will you be like Abraham and Tommy Barnett? <laughs> will you be one of them that's stepping out of your self-pity party? Will you be one of them who really taking the, and the team can come and join me on stage? Uh, will you be one of them that um, telling, telling the history that you're living today, that's enough? Will you be one of them who drawing a line in the sand and said, it's enough? No, I'm going to live a new story. I'm going to create something new because God has given, given me some dreams. And those dreams I will fulfill in Jesus' name. All the new stories begins in the ordinary. Sometimes we, we want to have an email from God or a text or maybe 
something written on the wall, I call you, I tell you, I want you to do, and you are, and all the kind of stuff. But all the ordinary, all the extraordinary starts in the ordinary. That's the life, the habit that you're doing. For example, just coming to church. You should never come to church with low expectations. You should not have low expectation of what God is doing right here, right now. Because the Spirit of God is here. He can talk to you. He can talk into your life. And I, I love the scripture from Acts 13 2. It says, One day, as they were worshiping God, they were also fasting and they're waiting for guidance. I don't know how long they fast. I love 10 minutes fasting and praying. I really love that. So I don't uh, 21 days, uh, it's an easy way to kill yourself. But anyway, uh, let's go back to the text. One day as they were worshiping God, they were also fasting as they waited for guidance. So in the midst of the ordinary, the Holy Spirit spoke. He said, take Barnabas and Saul and instruct them for the work I have called them to do. So in the ordinary worship, in the ordinary meeting, suddenly, I don't know how, how the Holy Spirit talked. Or maybe there was a, the, the screen team was maybe on, on the on the on the right place and maybe Jacob heard it from God or was an old aunt to have a, have a prophesy from the back road. I don't know how the, how the Spirit talked and I don't care. I care about that the Spirit talked and he said very clearly, take Barnabas and Paul and send them and today God is taking you out of the ordinary and is setting you into the extraordinary. And today, I'm, 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 uh, my life, it's not, it's not um, I have been through the worst 12 months of my life. I was not sure about I could be here today. But I'm still standing, and I'm still married, and I still have my kids, and I'm still a pastor for the church. But there is some season that we have to go through and just trust God. And this is maybe one season for you as well. So right here, right now, I want you to stay on your feet right now. And you're going to worship God. Because I, I'm so convinced that, that there is some of us, not, not everyone, but there is some of us that are in a season of life that you want to draw the line and tell your history that enough. No, there is a new time. There is a new season for me. So, in the end of this, can I pray for you? For all of you that really want to go further and tell the story that enough. No, I'm drawing a line in the sand and I'm looking for what God has in the future. Can I pray for you? If it's okay by you, you can raise your hand so I know who I'm talking to. A lot of hands is going up all over the venue. Lord Jesus, thank you. Anyone else, just raise your hand for whatever reason. It doesn't have to be this, but you're just seeking God for His love, for His power, for His wisdom in your life. Lord Jesus, I thank you. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each and one of those who have their hand raised now, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come with your power. Come with the knowledge. Come with the feeling that you love each and one of us. Lord Jesus, I pray that you will do some miracles here right now. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you you give birth to business. You, you get healing to relationship, Lord Jesus. There's something new that are in the air that only you can do. You're putting seeds of faith, seeds of a future in their life in Jesus name we praise you and everybody said amen, amen.